What we're going to be going over here is the fair value method versus the equity method for holding an investment of ownership securities of another company. And we're going to be looking at two cases here. So for case one, this is where our investment holdings are less than 20% ownership of the other company. And this is where we use the fair value method. And for example here, Corp A is going to acquire 10% of the 200,000 shares of common stock of Corp B. And the cost is $28 per share here. And Corp B paid a cash dividend here of $150,000 here for the year. And Corp B also reported net income of $244,000 here at the end of the year here. And the market price here of uh, common stock was $30 per share here at the end of the year here, 1231 here for Corp B. And the securities are for this uh, case here are as classified as available for sale securities here by Corp A. Those are the 10% uh, of the common stock that Corp A uh, purchased of Corp B here. In case two, this is where the holdings are between 20 and 50%. And this is going to be where we use the equity method. And we'll use the same example here as case one, except that Corp A now acquired 25% percent of the common stock of Corp B. So they have a 25% investment here in Corp B. Okay, so let's go and look at our example here. So uh, here we're going to be looking at Corp A's holding this investment here. We're looking at the fair value versus the equity method here for recording these investments here. So first we're going to be looking at reporting the investment using the fair value method. Now this is where the uh, uh, ownership here of a core of the ownership that you have in the company that the investing company that you have is less than the 20% ownership of the company. And for our example, we're going to use a 10% holding of the investment in Corp B, the uh, investee company here of its common stock. So what you have to do is, in this case, you classify these uh, securities here, the ownership of a uh, uh, in the investee or the Corp B here as available for sale securities here. And what you have to do is you have to set up this account here available for sale and holding securities here. And this is where it's less than 20%. So what we would do here, we record it at, their, at its cost. So there was 200,000 shares here, common stock of uh, Corp B, uh, the company being invested in here. And 10% uh, was purchased here by Corp A. And the uh, cost per share at that time was $28 per share when they purchased purchased it. So what that equates to is we uh, debit or increase our available for sale account here on our balance sheet here for $560,000. So that's the 10% ownership here of common stock. And then we would have paid here cash uh, credit or reduce our cash account here for $560,000. So the next thing we have to deal with is this dividend that was declared, uh, dividend that was declared here and received by the company here. So uh, total dividend here for uh, Corp B that they declared here and paid was $150,000 worth here. But Corp A uh, the investor company here has a 10% ownership in the Invest E Corp B here, so they're going to get 10% of the $150,000. So this would be dividend revenue recognized on the income statement here. Credit that here for $15,000. Okay. And then we would have received a cash payment of that dividend here. So over in our cash account, we would have debited that here uh, for $15,000. Credit here to our dividend revenue on our income statement for the portion or that 10% uh, of the total dividends that uh, Corp B declared here. Uh, Corp A gets 10% of that or 15000 here. Uh, credit your dividend revenue on the income statement and then debit your cash account for the $15,000 received. Now the only other thing we have to do here when you're dealing with this uh, ownership here that's less than 20% and it's classified as available for sale securities and what you have to do for any available for sale securities you you have to set up this fair value adjustment account to your, your securities here and that's simply a valuation account here you have to adjust it at the end of the period or the end of the year in this case and we have to adjust it based on the market price here of $30 per share of stock and the difference here our cost basis was $28 per share here so the difference time Times the ownership percentage here. There's the own 10% of the 200,000 shares of common stock of Corp B. So they would have 20,000 shares here. Corp A would own. Take that times the um, different the two dollars difference here in our 
uh, market price versus the cost per share and we're going to get forty thousand dollar increase here in our valuation to the, our available for sale securities here so you debit or increase your v fair value adjustment account here and that's a, a forty thousand dollars and that's a direct increase here to our available for sale security holding amount here of five hundred sixty thousand dollars so that would be our total fair value at the end of the period here 1231x1 would be six hundred thousand dollars for this available for sale securities and then when you're working with this fair value adjustment account here this is where on your you have to recognize an unrealized holding gain or loss as part of equity here on your balance sheet so your debit here your increased in value of your fair value adjustment here by forty thousand dollars the credit would go to unrealized holding gain in this case here uh, and an equity account here for forty thousand dollars now the other thing here is when you're dealing with the available for sale or the uh, fair value method you do not share in any of the net income of the investing corporation B here they had net income of two hundred and forty four thousand dollars per year here but using the fair value method you don't get the share in any of that net income okay so we've gone over the fair value method here just the basic entries here dividends you have to consider uh, when you receive them here and then you ha at the end of the year you have to adjust for any change here in your market prices versus your cost basis on a for the, that security here and you have to use that fair value adjustment account here and then for any adjustment that you make here you have to go to an unrealized holding gain or loss here as part of equity here uh, for the adjustment okay all right so let's go down here and now let's look at reporting the investment using the equity method here now this equity method this is where you have ownership between 20 and 50 percent of the company you're, you're investing in so in this case we are going to be looking at a 25 percent holding of the common stock here of corp uh, corp a is going to invest uh, own 25 or purchase 25 percent of the common stock here of corp b the investee company okay so in this case here what you do here you set up an investment stock account for that for that uh, for the equity method and the investment is at the cost again here of the security so we have a total 200,000 shares here of corp b and Corp A buys 25% or purchases 25% of ownership here. So at $28 cost per share here. So that equates to uh, your set in your investment account, you debit that here for $1,400,000. So that's that 25% ownership of the common stock here in Corp B. And then you would have paid out cash here, credit that here for $1,400,000. Okay, so we made our investment just remember here when you're using this equity method you set up this investment stock account here and that's what you have to work off of here so next for our dividend here so this is the difference here what we do with the dividend here now the total dividend that would have been paid here by the company uh, Corp B here was 150,000 so Corp A gets 25 percent of that here so that would equate to thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars but what they don't go and record the dividend here on the income statement what the dividend becomes is a reduction to the investment account here that investment stock account here so that would have been credit or reduce our investment stock account here by thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars so dividends received reduces the investment carrying amount so that's what you have to do when you ever have a dividend you have to uh, dividend received here you reduce your investment carrying amount here by thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars and what you would have received is a cash payment so you increase your cash here for debit that here for thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars so debit to your cash for the dividend received here uh, and that's for a cash dividend here thirty seven thousand five hundred and then you'd credit or you reduce your investment account here for any cash dividends here now the next thing we have to deal with is that and the net income here for the year here so what we have with the equity account you you share in uh you share in the net income of the other company here so the uh, uh, corp b 
had a net income here of $244,000 for the year here. Corp A has a 25% ownership, so they're going to recognize a revenue investment here on the income statement. That amount would credit that here for $61,000. So in this case, the revenue is a share of net income, which in and we're going to look at it, it actually in increases the investment carrying account here. So what we've done here, we recognize the in revenue investment by the amount of percentage or the ownership that a Corp A had in Corp B here of the total net income here for Corp B. So we would have credited that here again for $61,000 or included, included that on here on our income, uh, income statement as a revenue for this investment. And then the debit here goes to the investment account itself here. So that we would have debited here for $61,000 here, the investment account here for the portion of net income that their, uh, Corp A is in, in uh, sharing with the, in the investee company here. So you can see here, when you're dealing with this net income here, you recognize it as a revenue investment on your income statement here, and you also uh, that is recognized or credited here as a revenue interest and then over on your investment stock account here you would have increased your investment account here by $61,000. Now the other thing is here um, with the um, uh, fair value method we remember we were dealing with those available for sale securities so you had that fair value adjustment to those available for uh, to your security holdings here but with the equity method there's no fair value adjustment to the investment account here okay so we went over the just the basic um, difference here between the uh, fair value method here and the equity method so uh, just remember here with the equity method you set up this investment stock account here and any dividends um, that are received here cash dividends that is you reduce your carrying amount here in your investment stock account here by the amount of share of dividends that you would have received here and then for any um, net income that the other company has for the year you actually share in that net income here and you would increase your investment account here by the amount of uh, share of uh, net income that you would receive here. So those are the key things here. When you're dealing with this equity method here, you decrease your investment account here and investment in those stocks here by the amount of the dividend, that uh, percentage of the dividend that you would receive here, and then you would increase it here for the a percentage of the net income that you would receive. So that everything's taken care of in your investment account here when you're dealing with this equity method here versus the fair value method.